The process that I am about to demonstrate in this video is particularly dangerous compared to what I usually show on this channel. There's a risk of electrocution, blindness, and if those two things don't get you, poisoning. So this is a process that I hope proves educational for you to watch, but do not try this at home. Hi again, everyone. In this video, we are going to be using my carbon arc torch, which I built in my previous video, to generate a flammable gas by breaking apart water. Now, this is probably not the gas you expect. If you're familiar with electrolysis and uh, electrolysis cells that generate an oxyhydrogen blend, that is not the gas we're going to be generating. I don't think you'll have seen this process before, and I'll be curious if any of you can guess what the gas is that we are generating as I show you this process. So first things first, this uses my carbon arc torch connected to my arc welder to generate an extremely high temperature electric arc under the surface of some water. And I've built a special tank here, which is completely airtight. These carbon electrodes are going to be going through two little openings in the side of the container here, which have their tips under the surface of the water in this tank so that when gas is generated inside, there's no way for the gas to exit this way. It will have to travel through this tubing and into my gasometer. This is a device I built in a previous video about making wood gas. This is a really great storage device for any number of different gases that you might be generating with a method that does not generate those gases at high enough pressure to feed them into something like a high pressure propane tank. This is uh, something that I will not be showing how to make in this video, but if you'd like to see how, I can uh, link in the video description below to the video where I build this gasometer. So I'm going to turn this tank so that I have access to these two uh, ports at the side, and I will put these carbon rods into this tank and start generating an arc, and we'll see that gas is produced. And then I'll explain a little bit about how this process is working. Okay, so my welder is now powered on, and uh, in this tank is not distilled water, but it is rainwater uh, that had some leaves floating around in it from a bin I have outside. So it's going to be mildly conductive, but an arc welder, which I'm powering my torch with, does not run at a very high voltage. So the water itself is not actually going to conduct very much electricity. We're only going to start conducting a lot of electricity when I actually take my torch and have it under the water and touch these two rods together so that they strike an arc. Now, when that happens, we're going to see some interesting things occur. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this torch, these two carbon rods through the ports in my tank and get them to go down into the center. As I do this, I'm gonna put my welding shield down because there's a good chance that I'll strike an arc on accident as I insert these rods all the way down into the tank. Okay, I didn't strike an arc on accident, so now I'm going to do it intentionally and we'll see some gas start to be produced. Now you should be able to see if this gas is produced quickly enough the gasometer is starting to rise, which means that it's filling up with my gas. Now you should have been able to see the gasometer raise just a little bit. This is actually quite a difficult process to uh, keep the arc sustained underwater. I actually had to turn my arc welder up to about 150 amps uh, in order to get a fairly stable arc. And I could go even further all the way up to 250, but at that point you're really eroding these carbon rods much quicker than necessary. So I'm just gonna struggle a little bit to keep this arc sustained and we'll see if we can get the gasometer to fill uh, maybe about to here so that we have a significant amount of gas to play with.
Okay, well, you should be able to see that the gasometer is a good six inches higher than it was. So I've got uh, about a quart of gas in this uh, internal volume of the gasometer here. And I just, what I just did is I closed the valve that leads from the gasometer back into this tank so that there's no way for this gas to backflow into this tank if I happen to get an air leak. So let's talk a little bit about what this gas is. If you've had a moment to think about it, and you realize that this is not oxyhydrogen from a normal electrolysis process, well, what else is there that is entering this tank that could turn into a gas? If there's only water, which is H2O, and there's only these carbon rods, which of course are just pure carbon, and in this case coated with a little bit of copper, but that's irrelevant for this process, well, that means that this carbon must play a role. So what we are doing when we're actually generating this extremely hot plasma arc under the surface of the water is we are creating an environment where the temperature is reaching such an extreme that the carbon that these rods are made of actually becomes reactive enough to use the water as an oxidizer. It can actually strip away the oxygen in the water molecule and bind it to a carbon molecule, creating carbon monoxide. Now this generates, of course, the gas carbon monoxide, but then where does the hydrogen go that was also in the water molecule? Well, that also is freed as a gas. So what we're doing is we are eroding away these carbon rods to create carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Two gases that are both flammable and they both travel through this tube and into my gasometer. Okay, so all I'm gonna try is uh, feeding some of this gas into this burner and we'll see how it does. Since this is carbon monoxide, I do not want to start feeding gas into this before I have a pilot light over the opening or else I'm going to be filling my shop with carbon monoxide. Not great, though I do have a detector in here just in case. So we'll open up the gasometer, see how it does. All right. Now this is actually a really clean burning fuel because despite what you might know about carbon monoxide being a pollutant and a poison if it's in your home, when it burns, it produces pure CO2. It actually burns very cleanly. And the other product of this process, which is hydrogen, of course burns right back into water. So this is a very clean burning fuel and a great fuel to produce with excess electricity. Only the creation of the carbon monoxide is eroding these rods away. So in exchange for this rather substantial volume of gas right here, we've only eroded these carbon rods a couple millimeters. So to consume these entire carbon rods would be way more than enough to fill this gasometer completely to the top, probably more than a hundred times, as, just as a rough guess. So this is a great process if you want to generate a large volume of flammable gas quickly using an electric power supply. And there we go. The result of about 15 seconds of generating an arc underwater, we already have about a liter and a half of uh, of flammable gas. So let's see how long we can run this torch at, uh, well, let's say about half flow. I must have got some sodium, some kind of salt, uh, into this tank in that last run because this flame is definitely a lot more yellow than it was before, which indicates sodium contamination. All right, well, I will put a link in the video description below to the patent which I read that inspired this video, which again was suggested by a comment on one of my earlier videos. Big thanks to all of the people who have suggested video topics to me in the comments of my videos. I really appreciate that. And recently it has uh, 
really proved great. I've loved building this torch, which was suggested in a comment, and then this project in a completely different comment just happened to coincide with the torch project, and I was able to uh, do this experiment as well. So I hope you find this project interesting. I know I never imagined that water could be split in this way in a method that uses something completely different than electrolysis and yet still uses electricity. It's quite an interesting thing to me. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.